We have been given a series of cryptic videos about the parentage cult in Oxenfree 2. Welcome, welcome. First, we're gonna have a little fun tonight, folks. And I have been going through them frame by frame to figure out what the devs are trying to reveal to us and what will be uncovered on Parentage's secret website. I'm Journey, and I'm gonna help you work this thing out. Just stay tuned, everyone. The Parentage Cult is the main antagonist of Oxenfree 2, and they are trying to open the portal between timelines for their own nefarious reasons. In the cryptic video, there is a lot of contrasting imagery. Things growing, and things decaying. Frolicking joy-filled families. Human remains decaying in the dirt. And check out this happy young child who then becomes all distorted and covered in blood. And maybe it's me, but her smile seems rather forced and like she's looking off for confirmation somewhere that she's behaving the right way. I don't know. Actually, there are a lot of children and families in the video in general, which is pretty common in cults to indoctrinate and isolate members from a young age to cultivate a warped sense of belongingness. Look away is a phrase that flashes throughout almost every video. Even the Morse code in the first video spells it out. Or so this person says, I'm not that well versed in Morse code. Look away is also the phrase that is slowly being revealed letter by letter in the titles of each of these videos. But this is in direct contrast to Parentage's mantra. Yo, look away! Oh, they all look so happy as they sing their worship songs. But in between all of these brainwashing visuals, we get our first glimpse at Parentage in action performing a ritual together, communing secretly out in the woods, and worshiping underneath the phases of the moon. Parentage has a lot of lunar symbolism, which is reflected in their mask and repeated images of eclipses. The phrase, blood from the sky, may actually be a reference to the red color of the moon during a lunar eclipse, although the imagery we see appear to be both from solar and lunar eclipses, so I'm not 100% sure about that. And here we see them with a picture of the constellations in the background, and it's common in many religions and cults to have special rituals or ceremonies that are only performed during specific times of the solar or lunar cycles. But what parentage holds in highest regard is their holy doctrine contained in the Book of Planet Shine. With ash on their tongues, a reading from the Book of Planet Shine. Planet Shine, the parentage's holy book, they reveal the religion's origin story. It's not quite clear just yet what planet shine means. Perhaps it's a reference to the solar or lunar cycles, or perhaps it's the light that is cast on the earth from the triangle, or maybe it's more metaphorical and means that their inner self and world will be brighter once they get to the other side. We don't fully know yet, but we do get our first glimpse into who they are through the religious reading titled With Ash on Their Tongue, their Genesis chapter. It references wind and lightning striking the ground, setting it on fire, and creating the all too familiar glowing triangle shaped portal in the sky. They talk about the perfect day that could be seen through the portal. However, those standing underneath the triangle were all burned away with their death being viewed as an unavoidable sacrifice to experience the full beauty of paradise. So those lying dead and still smoldering on the ground are considered the original members of parentage. The first members literally being born with ash on their tongues. The triangle and that perfect day within it are likely the things that cannot be unseen. The things that bring forth new life from death which are represented in the lyrics, blood on the dirt makes the planet shine. Blood on the ground makes the planet shine. In the second reading from the book of Planet Shine titled Freed by Fire, we learn more about the disturbing motivations of parentage. Parentage has a mission of finding that perfect day once again to uncover the hidden paradise. And that takes sacrifice. In this case, burning alive 50 people out in the woods. Blood in the ground! Make the planet shine! Don't look away! Don't look away! Their ideology reminds me of the process of control burns in a forest, which gets rid of all the dead and decayed things to make room for new life to grow. For the cult, the life that sprung forth from those charred dead bodies of the original parentage is a symbol of what is necessary to reach a blissful future, or maybe a blissful past. Perhaps the members are trying to connect with those who died in their timeline but are still alive in another, or maybe they're looking for people who tapped into the triangle and entered into a different timeline long ago. There even seems to be a subtle transition of sorts from the phrase, look away, to the phrase, look away. But feel free to let me know if you think I'm reading too much into this. 
In the original Oxen Free, we were able to overhear conversations from three members that are carrying out the cult's practices, perhaps trying to keep a dying tradition alive. Blood in the ground makes the planet shine. Come out. Come out. Never in the trailers, we see that the triangle is stronger than before. It can even cut through trees. And in the radio signals picked up in the first game, we overhear the parentage trio, who all sound like they're probably in high school, freaking out that everything on the ground burned. There's nothing here. Like, like nothing. The grass is gone. Uh, uh, are you sure? Am I sure? I don't know. I'm, I didn't think this was real. And now that they've tapped into something that they didn't expect, they don't know what to do with it. Just tell me you don't know what to do so that we can both look it right in the eyes. I don't know what to do. I kind of wonder if they're tapping into the portal will connect them with the parentage from the past in some way, especially the cult leader that encouraged his members sacrifice while not being a part of it himself. In an undated news report, hikers in Berenson Creek stumble upon what they believe to be a site of mass self-immolation. And that's possible. But we know that parentage opened the triangle, incinerating more than 50 men, women, and children in the process, which they considered to be an honor. In the police scanner recording, we learn about the discovery of these charred bodies. I'll subtitle it because it can be kind of hard to make out. What? Criminal trespassing and braggers. What? Those freaks again. Lots of them fired, repeat, shots. At least 50. Plus, it appears that the parentage has existed for a very long time. In the missing posters, we have people missing since 1905, although we aren't sure if they're victims of the cult or willing participants. The same melody that Jonas recalls his mother humming is the exact same melody in the Planet Shine brainwashing song that the cult sings, suggesting that she too was involved with the cult. There are other familiar last names among the missing as well. Angelo Adler, who may be related to Maggie Adler. K.A. Bozek, who may be related to Marianne Bozek, who aided Maggie in deciphering the codes. Theodore Hardin, who may be a relative of Major Richard Dick Hardin, the communications officer that the tower is named after. And Dr. Steve Feinberg, who may be related to Lieutenant Commander Matthew Feinberg, the one in charge of the call and response systems on the base. All four of these individuals disappeared before the sinking of the USS Canaloa in 1943. So what does this all mean? I don't know. Maybe folks have tried reaching back in the past before to find their lost loved ones or to change the past, but I could be wrong. It's just a theory. Now, I must say this latest video has quite the triumphant feel to it. You see peaceful images of relaxing beaches and light glowing through the trees with only minimal radio static disturbances, unlike the videos before, which were heavily distorted. Is this the perfect day? Plus, there is that all too familiar triangle inside an all too familiar cave setting. But what about that website, though? Now, little by little, each video has given us a piece of the parentage's secret web address, and I have been so ready to get beyond the screen and get to the good stuff, which turned out to be a countdown to a live stream with the Night School Studio team, where they also played two hours of the upcoming game during the Q&A. But before that Q&A, we got to hear nine minutes of a radio sports announcer named David looping in time over and over. And the more he loops, the more jumbled his memories become as they start to overlap. It's really worth checking out. It was, uh, I, I pushed them. I pushed them down and watched them stop. You didn't get back up. You didn't get back up! And you know something? This reminds me of another game with another creepy cult that I covered in this video here.